So I may no longer be using OpenSUSE because I completed my two-year Linux challenge. You can see the video for that up here somewhere. But I really liked OpenSUSE when I was on it, and I plan on returning to it eventually. One of the biggest things that I missed on was making a video about the open build service while I was actually on the distro. So I'm rectifying that today. I want to talk about the open build service from a user perspective. I'll mention a little bit about the developer stuff, but I don't know as much about that because I'm not a developer. But from a user perspective, the OBS is actually very important to OpenSUSE. And I think that deserves to be talked about more. So here's my video talking about it more. So... What is the open build service? From a user perspective, you can think of it kind of like Fedora's Copper. Now, if you don't know what that means, it's basically a set of repositories hosted by OpenSUSE in this case that allows users to subscribe to those repositories and install software packages on their distro. Now, I specifically say on their distro because in theory, you can use the open build service to get packages for other distros. I'm not sure how well that works. I've never actually used it on another distro, but from OpenSUSE's perspective, it works really, really well. So we can put this another way. It's kind of, and I'm, I'm using the words fairly usually here, it's kind of like the AUR on Arch but for OpenSUSE. It's technologically different because there's it's a series of repositories instead of just one big repository. But the idea here is that you have a collection of software available to you that's not in the standard repositories that you can install on your system, maintained by the community, similar to the AUR. Now, the question here is, how good is the software selection and how do you use it? So it's not as big as the AUR. We can put that out there right now, but it's still fairly large. And a lot of times what you're going to find there are packages that haven't yet made it into the standard OpenSUSE repositories that are maintained by other people. So for example, and this is no longer actually true, but when Yazi first came out, you know, Yazi is a file manager for the terminal. When it first came out, it wasn't in the OpenSUSE repositories. It is now, but it wasn't then. And if you wanted to install it, you would either have to build it from source or you could go to the open build service to actually get that package and and install it on your system it's a it's that way with a lot of things a lot of things that just haven't made it to the open SUSE repositories yet start their lives off in the open build service another thing that the obs is good for is getting different versions of applications so if you need a specific version of a specific binary Sometimes that's available to you on the open build service, or you can just kind of go there and see what's available. It's not comprehensive by any means, but sometimes you can go there and find specific versions of things. One specific example of that oftentimes is Mesa. Now, Mesa is part of the Pac-Man repository, which I don't believe is actually part of the open build service. I'm not sure how they kind of blur those lines because so many people use pac-man it's, it's more of a, an officially sponsored repository from OpenSUSE. i believe that's the way that they use it but i could be completely wrong about that but mesa oftentimes has a different version number in the pac-man repository than it does when you get it from the standard open repository so those things can kind of be beneficial or de detrimental depending on what version that you're on uh, the pac-man this uh, repository is a little bit different and we probably can cover that in another video but it, the reason why i mentioned the pac-man repositories is because it's actually installed with the same tool that interfaces with the open build service so they treat pac-man as an open build service repository so let's talk about how you do this thing so my biggest beef with OpenSUSE during my two years of doing this or doing the, the the challenge was that they didn't actually promote the open build service like at all like if you didn't do Googling and mess around in the forums and talk to people on the Discord, you may not know that the open build service actually exists. And that's a, honestly a crying shame because it's so good and allows you to have access to a whole bunch of packages you otherwise wouldn't have access to. So because they don't promote it, they also don't install the tool you'll need to actually interface with it on your system. That's a shame. They should, but they don't. And it's weird because you do need that tool in order to actually install any of the codecs you need to run MP3s and AAC files and waves and all this stuff, right? You don't get any of that stuff out of the box. You have to use the open build service tool to do it. Now, to do this, go into your terminal, or you could do this through YAST if you're still using YAST, and you want to install a package called OPI. Now, in the terminal, that's sudo zipper install OPI. 
OPI is basically the yay or paru of OpenSUSE. It allows you to interface with the Open Build Service, similar to like yay or paru allow you to interface with the AUR. Yay and Paru don't actually install any packages. They either compile them for you or they'll send you through the actual package manager, which is Pac-Man on Arch. OPI does the exact same thing. It doesn't install anything. Instead, it allows you to manage the repositories that you're able to access from the open build service and then sends you to Zipper to install the things that you found. So it's all really a front end for Zipper. So you're still going to be using Zipper, but OPI allows you to search through the open build service when you want to find a package. So we're going to do a couple different examples here. The first one is a program that's available in the OpenSUSE repositories, but it's also available on the OBS. And that is an application called Hyperlock. Now Hyperlock is a locking mechanism for Hyperland or other whaling compositors. And it is very good, but we don't really need to talk about it here. The point here is that it is actually available in the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed repositories, but it's also available from several other repositories on the Open Build service. So if you do OPI Hyperlock, you'll see a selection of options for you to install. First, it'll tell you Basically, it will give you the search results for Hyperlock. There's not actually that many there because you're giving an actual package name, but sometimes you don't know what you're searching for. It will give you a whole selection of things that will match your search query. You choose the number of the thing that you're looking for that either matches the thing that you're looking for or is as close as you can get. And then it will tell you what repositories are available. And this is where we're getting into a little bit of territory that you need to be cautious because the... Open build service is a collection of repositories managed by the community. And that means that in traditional fashion, when there's a community managed repository, things get abandoned all, all the time. So you want to make sure you pay attention to version numbers. If you choose a repository that hosts the binary that you're looking for, that's two or six years old, you're going to be using that thing for quite a while because you're not going to get any updates from that person because they're no longer maintaining the repository. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to the version numbers. If there is a version from the OpenSUSE repository, take that one unless you have a specific reason not to. Now, chances are you're only searching through the open build service using OPI because you couldn't find it in the OpenSUSE repositories, in which case you won't have that option. You'll still need to make sure that you're using the latest version that you possibly can in a repository that's still maintained. And if you have syntax highlighting, this color is going to depend on what colors you're actually using in your terminal, but they do highlight which repositories are still maintained and which ones aren't. More specifically, I believe the way they do that is by looking at version numbers, which ones are behind whatever they consider the most current. I believe that's how they do it. I'm not actually sure. I just know that they do syntax highlight the ones that you most likely going to want. So definitely pay attention to version numbers. So that's the first example that I have for you. So the next example that I want to show you actually is going to be a little bit different because I'm recording this afterwards. So I'm, I'm not going to be appearing on camera for this part. But the example I want to show you for the second one is Pywall. So Pywall is a application that you can use to change colors based on your wallpaper. A lot of people use this if they're using a, a window manager or something like that. And it's not in the OpenSUSE repositories. So it's going to be a little bit different than the Hyperlock one that I just showed you because that one we installed from the OpenSUSE repositories. And it just basically allowed you to search a little bit differently than Zipper allows you to search. It's not that big a deal, right? It does allow you to choose some different versions and the UI looks a little bit different. But once I chose to install it from the OpenSUSE repositories, it just shifted me over to Zipper, asked me if I was sure, then installed it. When you're installing something from OPI that is, or with OPI that's not in the OpenSUSE repositories, the thing that you need to remember is that you're installing an actual repository. So what we're going to do here actually is show you how, how this looks. So this is going to be an OPI, and then you're going to want to do Pywall. Now, there are a couple different versions of Pywall that are available. You can search for those if you want, or you can just use the more generic term, and it'll show you all that match it. So I'll enter here. It'll search for the repositories, and then it'll show me what's available on the open build service. In this case, there's the original Pywall, and there's the Pywall 16. So I would rather have the second one. I'll hit 2, hit Enter, 
and then it's going to show me the uh, available repositories. Now, this here is where you want to be a little bit cautious because, again, as I'll probably explain in more detail later on, you'll want to pay attention to these version numbers because this could be significantly older than what's available for Python 16. So if we actually go to a browser and look at the current version of Pywall 16, it's 3.8.9, and this one here is a little bit further behind, 3.8.6. Not a big deal, you can still use an older version, but you should definitely pay attention to that. Say, for example, that was version 2 point something, you probably would want to be more cautious of that. So we'll go ahead and close that, and then we'll just go ahead and choose one for that repository. It's going to say, be careful, this package is from a personal repository, not reviewed by others. You can ask the author to submit packages to development projects in OpenSUSE Factory. Uh, adding the repository, it's going to tell you the name of the repository. Would you like to import the package signing key? So this is basically where it's asking if you want to trust it or not. So we're going to hit yes. You have to answer yes to this, otherwise it won't download. Okay, and then it's going to shift us over to Zipper. It's going to look basically like Zipper always looks, so you'll be very familiar with this if you use OpenSUSE. It's going to refresh the repositories. It'll take a second. And then it's just going to ask us if we're, if we're sure we want to install again. This is traditional zipper stuff. Well, yes, it will install the package. And then it's going to ask me if I want to keep the repository. So in this case, I want to select no. Now, I most always recommend saying no here just because you don't want to have to refresh this repository every time you do an update on OpenSUSE. That could take forever, okay? So if you're at all familiar with Zipper, you know that re refreshing the repositories is always the hardest and slowest part. Not the hardest part, but the slowest part. And the more repositories you add, the slower it's going to be. So in this case, I'm going to hit no. Now, there is a consequence to this. It means that you're not going to be able to get updates for this particular piece of software. That's going to be uh, something you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to do or not. You can always re-download if a new version comes available and do that manually. I'd still say no because it saves you some time every time you do an update. So I'm going to hit no here. It's going to ask me if I want to keep that public key that I uh, trusted earlier. You can select yes or no here. It doesn't really matter. The default is no. I always select no. And then Pywall 16 is actually installed. So that's how you actually use... OPI to search the OBS and then get shifted over to Zipper to actually install something. And as you can see between the two different examples I've given here, you here Hyperlock and Pywall, the, the experience is a little bit different depending on what repository you're getting it from. Obviously, if you're downloading from the OpenSUSE repositories, you already trust that. You already have that added to your system. So it's just going to shuffle, shuffle you over to Zipper, install the package, no no other questions. If you're installing from a third-party repository hosted in the open build service, it's going to go through this entire process that we just went through just now. So keep in mind that's going to be different. And I will reiterate that on some packages, you're going to have a wide selection of repositories available. So several people will, will have uploaded this to the open build service. And that means that you're going to have to suss out what version you actually need and if it's still being maintained or not. So you'll have to kind of figure that out on your own. And it's kind of hit or miss and luck of the draw kind of thing, sometimes depending on what package and how rare it is. So just keep that in mind, and we'll go back to the future version of me who recorded this video without OpenSUSE in front of him. So let's go ahead and go back to the other mat. So overall, the Open Build Service is a collection of repositories ho hosted by OpenSUSE. It's important that you know that it's hosted by not managed by it. all this stuff is going to be managed by the community itself so you'll need to have an eye on caution when it comes to what you download from there i probably should have put that at the beginning because you can still stumble upon things that are malicious or really out of date we kind of mentioned that earlier so just kind of be cautious with what you download similar to if you're using the aur now let's talk a little bit just a little bit about the developer stuff because i think that that's important to kind of note the ideal behind the open build service isn't that it's just a SUSE or an open SUSE related project. Their hope is that they can take this thing and allow other distributions to use it, which means that other users could then download a tool like OPI and search through the collection of repositories to get software packages. Now, I do not know of any other distributions outside of the SUSE and open SUSE sphere that actually do that. So, I don't know that they've been all that successful, but the idea there is that it's going to be one big collection of repositories available to 
basically any distro that wants it. And they have managed to be able to create those tools so other distros can do that. I just don't know any that have. Maybe there are and I just don't know about it, but as far as I know, there's not. So that's the developer aspect of it. I'm not gonna, like I said, I don't know much about it, so I can't ramble on about it too long, but I should, thought I should mention it. So that is it for the open build service. If you have questions on the open build service itself, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I upload for all my supporters, both on Patreon and on YouTube. Basically, that's just me sitting in front of a microphone for 15 or 20 minutes, just rambling on about random topics. And if that's the type of thing that you would like to hear, you can obviously head on over there and give me your support, or you can head over to the store and get awesome hats like this one, the I Love Vim hat or the Linux Nerd hat or all sorts of other merchandise that's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. All the proceeds for all the support you guys give me go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Just seriously, guys, thank you so very much. Getting a little choked up. Anyways, thank you so very much for your, for watching today. I hope you have a wonderful time. And I, I will just put this out there. I miss OpenSUSE quite a bit. I'm on NixOS now, and I'm having a time. So uh, I'll make another video about that. If you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.